What's up you guys? If you guys have been around the channel for a while, you've probably noticed that I constantly have been alternating between DWM and EXWM when it comes to what window manager I prefer. When I'm referring to EXWM, I'm referring to the Emacs window manager you may have heard of. Anyways, the main motivating factor for trying out these window managers and why I kind of love them is because they're both very hackable, um, fairly simple when you get down to it, and allow you to kind of configure your system to work the way you want. However, I had my own problems with each of them. For DWM, I actually really liked the simplicity of it and I liked the dynamic tiling. However, sometimes for things like development and very specific situations, I kind of wanted something a bit more manual so I could get just the right layout for what I needed to do, rather than having to have something either already set up or spend over an hour probably trying to come up with a way to make that layout work and be reusable so I'm not just wasting my time. I also liked the ability to apply patches and take other users code and apply it to my own configuration. EXWM had a very similar situation in the fact that EXWM allowed me to use Emacs packages to expand my workflow as well as opened up the world of Emacs which gave me the possibility to use Lisp to configure my window manager. Now Emacs Lisp is a pretty interesting language and the cool thing about it is that you can configure Emacs in very little lines of code and load it at runtime. Loading things at runtime was kind of a thing that I never thought I cared about until I started just being able to very dynamically configure my window manager without restarting and compiling. Now once again, EXWM had its own limitations, one of the biggest ones being that it made me reliant on Emacs. It also had issues where it would hang every once in a while since it is single threaded and it also had the issue of not being the most stable option out there. While some of these issues with EXWM have been resolved, I didn't want to get locked into a text editor just because my window manager depended on it. This led me to coming across what I consider to be the best window manager, at least for my case, out there. StumpWM. StumpWM is known as being the sequel or successor to the Rat Poison window manager, but in my opinion, it has gone far and beyond what Rat Poison was able to do in the first place. Now, StumpWM gets a pretty bad rap purely because of the fact that a lot of people have very, uh, let's just say, polarized opinions on Rat Poison, and a lot of people like to vocalize that they do not like it because they're not used to it and they didn't understand the general structure of how you'd use it. And to be fair, I don't really blame them. StumpWM and Rat Poison are a bit alien when you're used to other window managers out there in the world. However, once you wrap your head around it and realize the actual power that it offers, I think you guys will see what I'm talking about. Now, StumpWM's biggest selling point is the fact that it is very, very hackable. Many do compare StumpWM to Emacs for quite a few different reasons, one of the biggest being that it's very hackable, and the other one being that it is configured in Lisp. However, instead of being configured in Emacs Lisp, it is configured in what is called Common Lisp. Common Lisp is probably the most popular Lisp language out there, there are quite a few implementations of it, and the nice thing about it compared to Scheme is the fact that it is a much more standardized language. If you aren't familiar with Common Lisp, don't worry, I wasn't really familiar with it at all when I decided to start doing this, but through the documentation and learning a tiny bit of a Lisp on the side, I've made a pretty good starting point for myself to get comfortable with it. Since StumpWM was intended to be runtime hackable through Common Lisp, the nice thing is that you actually learn Common Lisp a lot faster because you have an entire WM as your actual REPL. So just as a quick example, let's go ahead and try this out. So I'm just going to actually open up a little REPL where you can evaluate things at runtime in StumpWM, and I'm just going to do 1 plus 2, and that evaluates to 3. Pretty straightforward. Now, Common Lisp itself was also intended to be runtime hackable and allow you to manipulate things at runtime through a REPL-like interface, so this also comes pretty natively to the language. Now, trust me when I say that hackability is not the only cool thing that comes with StumpWM. There's a lot more to what makes it awesome. So I'll give you guys a quick demo of the window manager, talk about how you can learn more, and show you guys a quick little introduction to what I have configured it so far. So starting out of the box, I don't want to spend too much time talking about key bindings because StumpWM can be kind of configured to use whatever bindings you'd like. And often you're probably going to want to remap some of those keys. The big reason I say you're probably going to want to remap some of them is because the defaults in some cases aren't very logical and you probably want to change them up. For example, you probably want to have something like opening a terminal and switching windows to be a bit more accessible. Since by default, it doesn't really make them very easy to get to because everything is behind a prefix key. When I say a prefix key, I'm referring to something like a leader key in Vim or control X in Emacs. 
everything goes behind a leader key out of the box. So because of that, things like switching windows will require at least two key presses. Now, like I said, you can resolve this pretty easily by just remapping them or adding another key binding to it. So out of the box, your guys' prefix key will be mapped to control T. But for me, I've remapped this to control Z. And if you ever forget what bindings you have set, you can actually hit your prefix key and then control H, and this will give you this nice little help interface. And you can also do control Z question mark, and it will give you the same sort of thing. Now you'll see that there is a bunch of different bindings I have set up in here. You'll also see these ones with stars around them. These are actually another prefix. So if I hit control Z, G, this will put us in my group map. And then if I hit question mark, it will give us once again, another listing of different bindings. Anyways, I won't spend too much time, like I said before, talking about these bindings. Now, the first thing that will kind of throw you off about StumpWM is this concept of a frame. Now, a frame is basically an empty space that a window could go in. So for example, right now, I just have this whole thing is one big empty space. So let's just open Emacs. Now you'll see I have Emacs opened up, and this is a window within a frame. Now I can open a new frame by doing Control z v now I have this mapped to create a vertical split, and now there is a new frame. Now this frame could have any window in it, so in this case, let's just open up a terminal. And now I have a terminal in this frame and Emacs in this frame. Now I could go ahead and actually remove this frame, and now I just have Emacs and there's only one frame. Now I removed the frame, but I did not remove the window. So I can actually do control Z N and it will switch between these different windows in the same frame. Now this is kind of cool. You can basically think of these windows as stacked on top of each other. Now if I did a vertical split again, it will once again, just swap these guys around. Now I could also do a horizontal split and now I just have an empty space because there's nothing else to put there. Now say I wanted to open up a web browser. Now you'll see that I have three frames. And like I said before, we could just remove this frame, remove this frame, and we can even alternate between them and still alternate between them. And in fact, we can actually swap them around very easily. So you can basically think of whatever window you can't see is basically able to be swapped around by switching between these different windows within the same frame. Now, if that's a little confusing, don't worry. Once you play around with it for a bit, it'll start to make a lot more sense. Now, the cool thing about this is while this is pretty manual, you'll see in a bit that there's actually a bit more power that comes behind this and allows you to do some dynamic tiling, but we'll get into that later. Now, the cool thing about frames is that they basically allow you to set up a layout and then treat windows as their own sort of entity instead of actually messing with your layout. So for example, say I wanted to have a specific ratio of size and then have one that I'm focused on and one that I'm using as reference, but I might need to alternate between the two of them. So for example, if I just set myself into this resize sort of thing, I can resize my windows. So let's make this frame a bit smaller. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna exchange these windows. Now, as you can see, I've exchanged them, so now I've got a nice big look at this guy, but I can make this guy smaller. Now, the cool thing about this is that I don't have to worry. If I wanna undo this, I can just simply undo it. And now I'm back to the previous layout and the previous window arrangement. Now that undo functionality is done using winner mode, which is a third-party module and StumpWM allows you to include third-party modules and kind of allows you to get the same sort of functionality of patching in DWM or a package in EXWM. Another functionality I wanted to show off is the ability to switch between windows very quickly. So in this case, I've opened up a bunch of different windows and I want to jump between them. Now I have this map to control Z B and it gives me this little prompt. Now say if I wanted to look at pulse mixer, I could just do PU enter, bam, looking at it, control Z B init and it will show me my stump WM configuration, control ZB, scratch, and it will show me my scratch buffer. These are just all individual windows that you can sort of jump through at your leisure. Cool thing about this is that if you have a bunch of them open and you just want to jump to it no matter where it is, this can be a pretty useful command. Now, as I've alluded to before, you can actually save and reload different frame configurations, which can be really helpful if you guys are, like I talked about before, doing a very specific thing. Maybe if you do it enough times and you have this very specific layout that you really want to keep around in case you ever need to do that again, then you can actually use a command called the remember command. So that can be pretty helpful and you can restore them later and load them at runtime. It allows you to basically get this dynamic functionality within your manual tiler, but there's actually more dynamic window managing that you could be doing. And I'll get a bit more into that as we go. 
Now, instead of workspaces like you'd see in most window managers, StumpWM uses something called groups. Now, groups at a surface level seem pretty simple, but have some really cool functionalities that come from their ability to have different properties depending on how you want to use them. So let's create our own group for this video. So you can hit your prefix key, G, to enter your group mapping and hit question mark or control H to list all the different commands. Now, we're going to do prefix key GC to create a group and we're going to call it video. Now, once we're here, we can start creating our own windows. So let's go ahead and just add a terminal, create a split, and that is it. This is what our current group looks like. Now, as you'd expect, you can actually switch between them by using Control Z, G, N, or whatever mapping you want to add. Now, we can go back by using Control Z, G, P, and we can also search through them by doing Control Z, G, quote, and then let's go back to our recording. Now the most powerful feature that groups add is the ability to have different types of groups. So there are three different types. There is the normal kind of group that we have been working with so far. There is the floating group where every window is floating and there is the dynamic group. Now the floating group is pretty self-explanatory but the dynamic group is actually really interesting. Now the dynamic group is just what you'd expect. It basically allows you to have a specific group that is intended to be dynamically tiled. Now this is really cool and you can even have this as your default groups if you wanted to but let's go ahead and just show you it rather than explain it to you. So by default, I don't think there's actually any mapping set up for creating a dynamic group, but let's go ahead and just use what I have. So I have prefix G and D to create a dynamic group. And what I'm going to call this is dyno. Now the idea behind it's very similar to what you'd expect from DWM. So if I create a terminal, it takes up the full space. If I create another terminal, it adds a little side column called the stack and I can keep adding new windows to the stack as you'd expect. Now I can jump between them with the same keys that I would expect based on their location, as well as being able to arbitrarily switch between all these different frames as I go. And as you'd expect, a lot of the bindings that you're used to when uh, normally using stump will work here so I can move around and I can also resize. So I have that bound to Control Z, Capital R, and then I can make this a bit bigger, maybe a bit smaller, and I can even, let's just go ahead and end that. And I can actually go ahead and resize these guys. So maybe I wanted to make them a bit taller. So let's do that. And I can go ahead and make them a bit taller, a bit bigger, a bit smaller. So pretty cool and kind of something that you don't usually see in most dynamic window managers. Now, as you'd expect, there's a ton of other features that I haven't been able to cover. And obviously I'm not going to be able to show them all in just this one video. Now I mentioned modules earlier. The cool thing about modules is like I said before, it adds a lot of new functionality. And there are two that I think definitely deserve a shout out. One of them is winner mode, which allows you to undo changes to your window layout. And the other one is bin warp. Bin warp is very similar to a program called KeyNav. The idea is that it allows you to move the mouse with just using your keyboard. So if I hit my prefix key, capital X, which is what I have it bound to, I can say left, which will say put it on my left display. I can hit uh, left. When I say left, I mean H in this case, it'll put it on the left monitor. And then I can go ahead and kind of narrow down to a specific spot I want to click. And then I can hit enter and it will exit and I can hit escape to exit as well. So that's pretty cool. And then I think there's actually a way to tell it to click, but I haven't really played around with it too much. I just thought it deserved mention because I thought it was pretty cool. Another one is adding gaps, which as you can see right here, I have set up as well. In addition, it also has its own little status bar, which it calls a mode line, which is kind of intended to be similar to Emacs as mode line. And you can configure it however you want. You can also remove it and use whatever other third party bar that you would like. Now I'll just go ahead and get started by showing off some of my own configuration. This isn't a final product. This is just where I'm at. And I figured some of you guys were going to ask, so I figured I'd walk through it. So first off, I say in package stump WM. This just basically gives you access to the functions that are in stump WM. And I believe allows you to not have to say stump WM before each of these different functions. Somebody a bit more knowledgeable on common Lisp could probably correct me if I'm wrong on this one. Now the rest of these are pretty straightforward just being top level mappings. Here we'll see that there is a root mapping, which means that this comes after the prefix key. So my prefix key is control Z, as I said before. Then if I hit Y, it will show us pulse mixer, or in this case down here, I could hit C. So control Z, C will show us a terminal. So pretty straightforward so far. Now, while the rest of those are pretty straightforward, the next interesting one is one here where I actually use the group map. If you wanted to learn more about the different kind of maps that are available out of the box, then you can hit prefix. So your prefix and then question mark. And this will kind of list all of the different things. And you'll see right here, I have groups map. 
as well as exchange window map. So if I wanted to add something to the exchange window map, then I would use that variable instead of groups map. Now, if you ever kind of want to learn a bit more about maybe a key or a command or something like that, then you can always do prefix H and this will give you a bunch of help options. So for example, a key, I would hit K and then I could do uh, prefix G D and it will describe the command and what it's used for. Now, alternatively, I could also do prefix H Let's do C and I can get help with the command. So window list, and it will give me a nice explanation of what window list does and the arguments it could take. Pretty cool. Now, anyway, so those commands, we'll get a bit more into commands as we go because I actually create some down here. So these commands are pretty interesting because by default, I basically don't have access to actually focusing on the split that I create. And often that's what I wanna do. So by default, if I hit prefix S, it will split the windows, but it won't actually focus this window. It'll continue focusing this window, um, which often I don't really want. Now, alternatively, uh, let's just remove that. Now, alternatively, I have this little command that I have set here, and you can simply map it just like this. Now, commands also act similar to functions, and in fact, they can be called just like a function as well. Think of them similar to interactive functions that you'd have in Emacs, but let's not linger on this for too long because I don't want this video to go overboard. Here, I'm just loading a module called battery portable. Not very portable because it's not really handling this weird setup that I have for batteries. So it's pretty understandable that it's a little confused. Here I just add some random stuff for my status line and then here I actually set my mode line. Just to speed things up, I won't linger on the mode line for too long. You guys can go ahead and look at it and try and understand it on your own. Uh, I add some other stuff like gaps, set the font and a little binding to toggle my mode line. And then I set some custom stuff. So if I ever have element or discord open, it will basically emulate Emacs's key bindings. Here I'm loading bin warp, uh, winner mode, which allows me to undo, like I mentioned before. And then here's actually pretty interesting. So this section of my configuration, I actually created myself and I'm pretty proud of it in my mind, probably too proud because it's not really that crazy. What I did was I basically made a bunch of different functions that I plan to use uh, throughout my configuration. The idea behind what I was really trying to do was to make Emacs windows and splits treated the same as Xorg windows. So for example, uh, let's go ahead and create a vertical split and let's create a terminal. Now to switch between them, I have, like I said before, super H and super L mapped to jump left and then right. Now, if I wanted to say, for example, I created a split in Emacs, I could actually still do uh, super J and K to switch between them and it would be treated the exact same way. Let's go ahead and create a split here just for reference. So now I can actually just switch between them and they are treated very similar to how you would expect windows to be treated in any other window manager. And there isn't really any overhead. It handles pretty much everything as I would expect. And that's one of the cool things about it is that I made this and I didn't even have to restart my window manager and I could evaluate it dynamically. If you wanna just try something out on the go, then you can once again do prefix colon and this will allow you to evaluate things. Remember this is different from a command. So if you're evaluating things, you're actually evaluating common lisp. So let's do pr like plus 91.1 uh, and we get 91.1. So you kind of get the idea and so you can evaluate things like that as well as Emacs has a stump WM mode which allows you to load and compile things um, while the window manager is running. You can connect a REPL to it. You can do pretty much whatever you want. And the cool thing about this is that it really doesn't have to depend on your window manager. Now, one of the cool things that came out of this was the ability to evaluate Emacs Lisp um, at runtime uh, just using the actual evaluation. So if I just do eval-el, which is the actual function that I've added, and let's go ahead and just give it a little expression plus one and two. Uh, similar to before, and it will return a string with the actual answer from Emacs. Um, obviously, this could be improved more, uh, and I plan to improve it further. Now, where can you learn more about this? Well, there is a wiki on their GitHub, which I'll have linked below, as well as the info. So if you do info stump WM, uh, you'll get a nice little listing and you can kind of look through the different stuff. So if I wanted to look at key bindings, a uh, list of default key bindings, there's this nice little list. Um, I can go up and let's go ahead and look at the commands, a um, bunch of variables indexed. There's a bunch of information here that'll basically give you a much better rundown of the actual window manager than I ever could. Well, hopefully maybe one day I can give you guys that good of a rundown on it, but that's kind of a good starting point. So go ahead and look at the info page. Uh, there's also external documentation that you can look on in the web browser or something like that if you'd like, or a PDF. But uh, it's not always completely necessary. There's lots of resources online and uh, I'll try and help you in my Discord if you guys decide to join and chat with me. In addition to that, there is also a IRC chat and a 
mailing list that you guys can go ahead and look at that I will try and link down in the description. If not, it will be linked in their website. Hopefully this video didn't seem too rushed. I really wanted to get this video out there just to share how awesome of a tool this is. Um, I'm really happy with it. If you guys are interested and give it a try, let me know how it goes. If you guys aren't interested, maybe you have a different window manager you think I should be looking at instead, let me know down in the comments and maybe I'll take a look at it later and maybe I'll compare them in a future video. Now I'd like to thank my GitHub sponsors, Brian Jenks, Casper Nettenbolt, and Paulo Bennettcourt. Sorry if I mispronounced your guys' names, be sure to let me know down in the comments or message me. Uh, I'd like to say them properly and I'm sure I'll get better over time. If you guys would like to support me, you guys can see a link down in the description to my GitHub sponsors page where you guys can support me as well. Anyways guys, it's been great seeing you and I'd love to see you in the next video. Thanks, I'll see you next time.